Hey, David here, broadcasting from the Bent Pine Golf Club, and thanks for listening again. So, I've been thinking. I've been thinking about how to deal with my finances. So, I decided to go to an expert and ask Gordon Stein here. He's the author of the Cash Flow Cookbook to help me out. And I have to tell you that his book took the fear out of dealing with my finances. And in addition, gave me some great tips on how to save lots of dough. And also, I can't believe I haven't answered such a basic question on our uh, Yak About Tech segments. So I will, and that's what we'll yak about today. What's up, everybody? David Yak here, here for Yak About Today, hoping you are better, healthier, and more informed than any generation that came before. So if the years 46 to 64 mean something to you, then this is the place you want to be. Now put your headphones on, go for a run, and listen to what we yak about today. Okay, again, thanks for listening. So before I bring Gordon Stein on and talk about his new book, Cashflow Cookbook, um, I want to do a little yak about tech uh, segment uh, that I hadn't actually planned to do. And I'll do this quickly, but it started. I was actually uh, walking the dog and uh, one of my neighbors came out running, uh, asking me for help uh, with her 15-year-old computer, which she said wasn't working right. She said the keys were all sticking and the screen was all blurry. And I'm sitting there thinking, uh, you know, a 15-year-old computer is sort of not really viable. But again, if it's kept in good condition and you're only using it for basic uh, web browsing and maybe a few emails, it's fine. So I went in to take a look, and what I saw was uh, not really great. It was, I would say, pretty disgusting, if you ask me. Um, There was food in between the keys and grease on the screen. Um, And, you know, my first feeling about this is how you could treat tech that way. Um, And I looked around the house, and, you know, the house looked perfect, clean, all the everything. And then I realized that so many people are afraid to clean their computers, so... I thought of a couple of useful things, and I need to do it quick because I don't want to take time uh, away from Gordon, right? So I I sort of consulted. I started looking up myself. I've been cleaning my computer with wipes and actually specialty materials uh, that are made for cleaning a computer. And then I ran across uh, Jolie Kerr's article. (coughs) <coughs> excuse me, who uh, who does a podcast called Ask a Clean Person. And uh, there are exactly four things to keep a laptop clean, you know, and that's what, and this is what you need, and this is what I recommend. Uh, rubbing alcohol, a microfiber cloth, cotton swabs, canned air, and isopryl alcohol should be at least 90% because uh, uh, alcohol can't damage the internals if used right. I mean, if you pour the bottle on it, it could hurt your computer, but if you put it on a cloth and you wipe around, it will not hurt the internals of a computer. For most people, I don't recommend opening up your computer. Um, Some people know how, and they can air spray the computer and wipe down a component or two with the alcohol, Uh, but I don't recommend that. Uh, What I do uh, say is use the air can, right, and spray out all the um, uh, places where you plug things in, you know, like your USB ports or your power and things like that. And then take cotton swabs and dip it in the alcohol and then go between the keys. And if you mix a little water and alcohol together, you can actually form a solution that won't hurt the screen. So uh, I'm doing this quickly, but if you're interested, I'll go a little further with this. But I want to get on to my interview with uh, Gordon. Don't talk back. Hey, so this is David, and I got a great guest, as I told you at the upfront of the show. His name is Gordon Stein. He's the author of Cashflow Cookbook, and I want to welcome Gordon. Thanks for being on here. Hey, it's great to be on Yakubo today. So this is really interesting. I absolutely love how you translate it in cookbook recipe form, uh, Mm -hmm. the idea of how we deal with our finances. 
And, yes. I, I, you know, on the website, you really give hints of what's in that book, which are really good because it's a great sales tool, honestly. Yeah. So you can really sort of promote the book anytime you want. It's called Cash Flow uh, Cookbook. And um, you know what I like that you did is by breaking things down. I, I, actually, let me step back. Let's talk about how you came to the concept of recipes, ingredients, and all that, and turned it into a financial help book. Yeah, great. Um, well, the book kind of started as a bit of a coincidence. I had a friend in my car, and he spotted a car wash receipt in my console. At the time, I was an executive, uh, mid-50s or so, and he said, why would you spend money on car washers, you know? And I thought to myself, well, they're $13. Like, it's not going to make any difference. And he said, you know, you want to get a, a gas savings card and you save up the points. The gas retailer, then you can trade them in, fill in a form to get a car wash. And I thought, I'm not going to do all that. Too much work. Anyway, um, then I found one of these little dongles that you can touch the gas pump at this particular chain, and it calculates the points automatically to get the car washes. So I was saving $25 a month or so on car washes. I thought, what a great idea. No effort, no sacrifice, and got one for my wife, and that took me to $50 a week. And then there was one of these discounted home alarm monitoring companies I heard on the radio. So, you know, full monitoring for $10 a month. So I traded that in from where I was paying 35 and that was $75. And I got curious, what else is there? So I gathered up this massive spreadsheet of these ideas over two years. And uh, I was stunned that they could provide an incremental $2 million of net worth. I sat down to write this as a novel was the idea. I had my characters plotted out and I just realized this would just never fit. You're not gonna get these 60 ideas in with these 10 characters into a novel. It's just gonna be too complex. I was frustrated. Went off and did something else. I said, gee, this thing's more like a cookbook. And then I said to myself, it is a cookbook. It's exactly what it is. So you don't have to read cash flow cookbook cover to cover. You got something you want to take a look at, your cell phone bill, your heating bill, or any kind of expense in any kind of category you can imagine. You pop in, you read that one recipe, and you've got some ingredients complete with a yield table. So just like when you're baking cookies, but this time you've got a yield table. Hey, what are these savings worth to you if you invested the savings for 10 years or for 20 years? And cash flow cookbook was born, Dave. That's the thing, incredible. You know, the one thing you do do that really caught me by surprise is, and it reminds me of something else, and I'll tell you what that is. Um, you seem to break all the rules on how we operate financially. And what I mean by that is, and if I can do a perfect analogy, is uh, if somebody coming over t to me and saying, by the way, I'm going to help you lose 20 pounds and you could eat everything you desire and you don't ever have to go on a diet, right? Yeah. And you're going to lose that 20 pounds. You do the exact same thing because uh, you, you say throughout, right, that you can do this without sacrificing. Right. I think it's I think there's three things that are important in the book. One is no sacrificing or minimal sacrificing because who wants that? And the second thing is minimal effort to set up these changes. Most of them take an hour or less, a phone call, changing something. And it's things that people don't usually think about. And the third thing, in my view, is this move away from budgeting. I mean, everyone talks budgeting, but who actually keeps a budget? And if you actually lay out a budget and then you've got a kid who needs new hockey gear, uh, for a thousand bucks. Well, where does that go on the budget? So my view is let's not budget. Let's understand what we're spending and let's track net worth over time. In other words, what do you own and minus what do you owe and where are you at? Now it might be, might be negative or you know, it might be positive. It might be a big number, it might be a small number, but Hey, can you improve that thing month by month, quarter by quarter? And if you think that way and then you start digesting some of the recipes in the book and your own ideas, you're going to grind down these monthly recurring expenses on things you're, you don't really, you're not that excited about. So you free up cash for the things you want and you can build some net worth, which means you can retire more comfortably. Right. And, but you're not saying don't understand what's going on in your life. Like, I think it's in, in the ingredient section. You say, look, set up your expenses here, you know, yeah. set up, you know, you do tell people to what spreadsheets to set up that'll help you understand your expenses better. Exactly. Yeah. And if you go to cashflowcookbook.com in the utensils section, so we carry on the cooking puns throughout, in the utensils section, there's a couple of very easy spreadsheet templates you can download. One to get a handle on all of your debts. And the other one is to track this business of your worth. What do you own minus what you owe? 
All right. You know, I have a question for you. I'm going to ask it for you now, and then I'm going to take a, a little break because it's not possible without a sponsor, like a group I really love, and then, uh, then we'll come back. But I want you to think about this. So, so many of my colleagues and so many of the people that I'm surrounded with are baby boomers who are coming to retirement and the enormous expenses they had all their lives, even though they were successful, they had all these expenses. They were putting people through college, and in many cases, they're still supporting children, uh, mm -hmm. that type of thing. And they're really, they're sort of forced to work, or some of them are barely able to retire. You know, you have a lot of advice here. And within the cookbook, if you had recommendations of what ingredients, what recipes that you think would be apropos for them, then we'd appreciate it. But first, I'm going to talk about my uh, great, great sponsor. So, so, boys and girls, I'm going to do this live. You know, sometimes I actually stick uh, a pre recorded piece in here, but I wanted to do this live because I got a great story. And it's about New Vision Eye Center. And you know how much I love these guys. And you probably know uh, everything I've been saying and all the stories. But I have a new story. So, I'm sitting around dinner. And there's about four of us from the area, and there's a friend that comes in from out of town, and we're sitting and talking, and the friend cracks his glasses, right, and starts talking about, I think I have trouble, not only are my glasses bad, but I think I need, you know, I'm having trouble in one eye, and everybody's sitting around with this smirk, right, on their face, and in unison, and, and I think this is really hysterical because I didn't lead it, but in unison, there were four people go, go to New Vision Eye Center because we wouldn't trust our eyes to anyone else. And everybody knows that's uh, the tag that I, I started for New Vision. So I was really, really thrilled. And that started a whole uh, conversation, not only on aging eyes, but on the fact that there's really only one game in town, and that's New Vision Eye Center. So go see Dr. Minotti, Tate, O'Brien, and all the great people at New Vision Eye Center. Tell them David Yak here from Yak About Today sent you. And the reason is, I wouldn't trust my eyes to anyone else. We'll be back after the break. All right. Uh, we are back. We're here with Gordon Stein. He's the author of Cash Flow Cookbook. I really highly recommend this, uh, this book. It's the most unique way to look at your finances. And he's one of the few people I've ever met that doesn't make you feel like you be, should be stressing out <laughs> over the finances. You know, <laughs> he's got these recipes. Um, uh, when I look at them, it makes such total sense. So anyway, Gordon, I asked you a question earlier uh, before we cut to the break. Um, and this is something that really is, it rings true and it worries me, right? There are people 55, 60 plus who don't really have the means. They're going to have to work. And those that have the, well, there are a set of very wealthy people, obviously, because the baby boomers, uh, control $2 trillion worth of you know, mm -hmm. money in the society, but about 40% of them are really walking a fine line. Somehow, the lower part of that 40% uh, percent will have to work for the rest of their lives. And then on the upside of that are people who, you know, in, who planned and they have their pensions and they have their Social Security and things like that. But what they planned would work with $5,000 a month now cost $8,000 a month. Right. You know, so um, maybe you can give them some help and then maybe go into some of the recipes. And I love the fact that there's ingredients there and all that. I really do. I'm so taken with the idea. So uh, maybe you can help these people. Yeah, no, it's great. I'm 56 years old myself. And, uh, you know, I've been through some job changes and I myself looking at retirement. So I, I completely get the stress around this. I think one of the big things is people fuss with not having enough money. But in many cases, they take their expenses as a given. And I recommend taking a look at those expenses, particularly any of these recurring monthly ones. Those are the ones that make a big difference. And to really get them out there, track them, take a look at them and see what's happening. And then you can run through cash flow cookbook one recipe at a time and say, hey, this would apply to me. Let me try this. And then you track, hey, here's what it could save for me. And you grind that budget down, not giving up the things that you love and the glass of Merlot at the end of the day, but focusing on things that, hey, you could live without. So that's the general idea of cash flow cookbook. A couple of examples of things that I see all the time for people in our kind of age demographic. Uh, one big one is storage lockers. 
And um, quite frequently, you'll see people who uh, they, you know, they get divorced or they move or their, you know, kids bring gear home or whatever. And they're paying two, three, four hundred dollars a month in these storage lockers. You see them popping up all over the place in Canada and the U.S. And that's an awful lot of money. That makes a big, big difference. And in many cases, they're storing things that you more or less couldn't give away if you tried to sell it online. OK, so I would take a hard look at that. I mean, if you have stuff that you couldn't get rid of for four hundred dollars on an online site and you're paying four hundred dollars a month, that makes no sense. I would get rid of it. Get rid of the storage locker. Free up that four hundred dollars. Put that toward debt repayment, mortgage payoff or towards retirement. So that'd be one that's worth a hard look. Second one is if you've got kids at college, I often hear people say, oh, they called in October. They're out of money. Well, I would restructure that a little bit. And what I would do is I would offer to pay for your children or your grandchildren, pay um, all of the fixed costs, rent, you know, tuition, books, et cetera, um, but not pay towards, you know, beer and, you know, meals out and whatever else. So the idea is that, hey, you know what those expenses are and let that child learn how to do their own budgeting and they should be saving up for some or all of their uh, anecdotal expenses. So that gets rid of these overages on the college. You're going to pay uh, X percent of those known costs. So that would be another one. Um, and then another one that's interesting, um, I kind of call it toys. So if you think about many people who at this stage and age, they've got a cottage, they've got a boat, they've got something like that. So get a little creative there. Could you uh, rent out part of it for part of the season to someone else? Could you have somebody else buy into the cottage or the boat? Do you need it every weekend? And that can be a great way to free up cash. Or do you want to sell the one that you have or downsize it, whether it's a uh, a sea do or it's a sailboat or a motorboat or whatever it is, a cottage. Hey, is there a way to optimize that a little bit in this sort of sharing economy that we see? You get the same amount of use out of it, but somebody's using it in those off hours. It's, so those are three quick ones. It's sort of, uh, I, I know a few people are doing Airbnb uh, yep. to keep their expenses. I even know some people that, you know, they're sitting in a three bedroom and it's just a couple with two extra bedrooms that, you know, the kids come visit twice a year and yep. they're, you know, they're taking in somebody, you know, and renting a room. Um, you know, the one there is another part that really fascinates me, and I'll, t I'll tell you why. When you say you're yeah. paying double for everything. So let me tell yeah. you what I used to do on this radio show. Um, I, I don't know when. I think during the really good year, financial years for me, I never really thought about money. Honestly, if I wanted it, you bought it, you know, that yeah. type of thing. And you know, there was always a joke, uh, oh, you pay retail, that type of thing. Yep. But when I got down here and I was looking at a, a, a budget and I said, you know, I could have a really great life, but I need to understand these expenses. I mean, I did the obvious things, checking the cab my cable TV bills, you know, <laughs> can I really cut the cord and keep the Internet and still make sense of it or my phone, uh, my mobile phone bills, things like that. But something really occurred to me and it had to do with the CVS drugstore. And this is not a plug for CVS, although I do shop there. Uh, mm -hmm. And what I noticed is on a regular routine basis, they were sending me things like 40% off one product, mm -hmm. any product, or 30% off your entire order. And that if I only shopped when those coupons and those things came in, and now they come in through email, and of course you mm -hmm. have to have your sort of points account with them that I actually kept a one-year um, receipts, right? And I saved upward of like $2,500. Now, yes. I keep telling everybody you could save 30% off everything if you just wait for the sale or if you buy at the outlets. But you're making a statement saying, why are you paying double for everything? Right. So take me through how I could get 50% uh, yep. off instead of 30% uh, off. Yeah, it's an interesting one. And I agree with some of those things you're talking about. There's a lot you can do by getting on the subscription list of these companies. You get the discount coupons. That's all smart. But again, I really like this low effort idea, low sacrifice. So give me an example of where I got onto this. Um, I play the guitar. Not great, but I play and I love it. Um, and I wanted to get a particular guitar. I wanted a, a Sienna Finnish Stratocaster, Finnish Stratocaster with a maple neck. So went to the music store, about $2,500 to get one, which is, you know, that's a chunk of money. And uh, I'm up in Canada. We've got something called Kijiji, which is an online marketplace. There's all kinds of different ones, depending on what state you're in. But it's one of these online marketplaces. And um, so if you wanted that particular item, that particular guitar, you could go in every week and see, does anyone have one? Keep doing the search for it. And what I discovered is that many of these things hidden in the functionalities, they have alerts. 
So you can go in and set up and you can say, hey, I want this maple neck sienna finish, you know, American standard Stratocaster. And that's all you do. You just put it in there. And then a week and a half later, bing, up it pops. And there's the one that I wanted. And um, no haggling, no must, no fuss. It was $1,000, which is well under the $2,500 it would have cost me to get out the door. And there's no sales tax on it. Um, it's brilliant. And what's amazing is if you take one of these online marketplaces, and there's so many of these different ones, and they're different depending on your local area, but we all know what we're talking about. Look for the way to set up that alert. And then whatever it is you want, uh, you know, a maple coffee table, you know, a pine hutch, anything, in it goes right in there. So any of these things that you buy, um, away you go. All right. I need you in like yeah. 30 seconds to right. tell me um, the, the one insight or one, one thing you would recommend to a baby boomer about the way they should think. Yeah. Great. Um, so I think really simple. I think taking a look at these recurring expenses. So wherever it is you spend, is it your credit card? Is it a debit card? What does you do? Spread all those things out and look at each and every one of those items, particularly the ones that come up on a recurring basis every month. And if you read Cash Flow Cookbook, not only do you get the recipes in there, but it'll get you in the headspace. So you think of different ways of thinking about things uh, to save. All right. Uh, that's Gordon Stein. He's the author of Cash Flow Cookbook. I highly recommend it. And for, for people listening on the broadcast version of this, um, we're going to cut it now because of time. But if you want to listen to the rest of the interview, I suggest you all go to yakabouttoday.com and you can listen to Gordon Stein. And we've got a few more interesting questions uh, that I think you'd be interested in. So broadcast people, listen. Go to yakabouttoday.com. Okay, we're back. I'm David Yak here. You're listening to uh, Yak About Today. Uh, for those of you who were listening on the broadcast side, I hope you rejoined us because we do have Gordon Stein, author of the Cash Flow Cookbook, uh, which I highly recommended on the first part of the broadcast. So, uh, Gordon, so here's the question, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure how I'm. I'm not sure there were actual answers, but there may be a perspective you could give us mm -hmm. on this. And uh, that is a lot of us in this age group have been left with debt and mm -hmm. sometimes significant. And the conversations that are arising from this are, do you bankrupt that debt, right? Do you consolidate it at a lower interest rate? Or I believe the third option was having somebody negotiate it down and you just pay, you know, whatever this company is that negotiated it down to half and there's no interest or anything. Um, and so I'm just curious if you have a perspective on that. Yeah, different options. And I think, you know, probably in that case, best to um, speak with some experts in terms of, you know, insolvency, if it's actually at that point, you know, can they do a consumer proposal and consolidate those debts um, and grind it down for you? Um, or is bankruptcy a better option? I think because that's so personal, um, I would recommend speaking to one of those folks if you're at the point where it's uh, really is unmanageable, there's obviously impact on credit scores, etc. I would say, though, if you're sort of short of that point, and you've got some debt, uh, which is perhaps significant and um, doing one of those kinds of actions wouldn't be appropriate for you and you want to maintain credit ratings and so on. Then I would um, take a look at a few things. I mean, first of all, I think it's important to get a look at all of your debts, get them all out there where you can see them because people tend to be a little bit in denial. They've got a mortgage debt. There's a credit card. There's another credit card they don't want to think about because they're paying that off. They keep it in the drawer. But um, on cashflowcookbook.com in the utensil section, I've got a debt schedule. So, Pull that up, very simple spreadsheet. Fill in all of your debts, the interest rates, et cetera. Step one is to see them. And then two schools of thought. One is to pay down the highest interest first. I actually like um, an idea of snowballing popularized by Dave Ramsey, which is you go after the smallest debt, get it paid down, and then the payments you would have used there, you go after the next one and so on all the way through. Um, and then, if, you know, take a look at those interest rates as well. Is there an opportunity to get those rates lowered by the institution as a possibility? Um, or could you take out a HELOC, a home equity line of credit, at a lower rate and use that to pay off one of those higher interest rates, perhaps if you've got some 
uh, credit cards going. So some different moves to be made like that. And then I think what's really important is just to pay them down as quickly as you can and get rid of that debt because no good comes of having the debt. Can you sell off some of the assets would be another question. But what I would do is um, in Cashflow Cookbook, we've got 60 different recipes covering everything from housing to transportation, food and drink, you name it, household, lifestyle, and financial. And can you find savings in there? And the instant you find those savings, immediately apply them to paying down this debt. And in many cases, these things are very quick to implement, minimal sacrifice, and those funds can make a real difference in terms of retiring that debt. So do you um, – I know you, you're a speaker um, in, uh, you know, in gatherings and all that on finances. Do you do this as a business? Do you do – besides publish the, the book, do you do one-on-one counseling? Um, do you, what are the type of services that surround the cookbook? Yeah, I mean, I can do that. Uh, my focus has really been on speaking in front of groups. Um, and when I speak in front of groups, I do a lot of public speaking. The focus is really on getting these finances tuned up. I don't grind through all the recipes in the book. That's kind of tangential. But just some fresh thinking on how to get finances turned around. So if you have a group in your company or in your organization and you're interested in um, having me speak, um, head to cashflowcookbook.com. You'll see the speaking section on there. All right. Um, so the last, uh, the last question I have mm-hmm. is on, uh, on the recipes, explain to people just, I mean, I, I find this fascinating, so maybe you could, uh, we could have some fun here. So yeah. there's a recipe, right? Mm-hmm. There's yeah. utensils and ingredients. Yeah. Yeah. Give me an example of, okay, so we know the recipe. We have the general concept of that. Yes. Um, How about uh, utensils and ingredients? Yeah, so, um, you know, my editor said there's enough cooking puns to fill a roasting pan in the book on the website. So it was very fun keeping going with it. It was a real challenge. Sometimes I wake up at 3 in the morning and go, okay, I need something that would be a good cooking term for this. So a lot of fun. So the idea on the website, um, there is the utensil section. And these are really tools, uh, no different than cooking utensils, that can be helpful. So, you know, there's a, a simple template there to take a look at your net worth. And is that rising over time? Are you building retirement funds? Are you building money to start your own business or whatever? As a debt schedule on there. And in the book, I talk about applying these um, monthly savings and investing them, which equally could be paying down debt, and what it's worth to you over 10 or 20 years through the power of compounding. And in the book, I use 7%. Some people say, I don't buy that. Um, I think it's more like 6%. So also in the utensils, you can pick the factor that you like in there to do the math, which I do at the end of each of these recipes in the yield table. So that's the kind of thing in utensils. Ingredients, um, <clears throat> still building that out. And I'm open to suggestions in the ingredients if you've got This is really about a merchant or a partner or somebody who has a product or service that can actually save you money. So, you know, examples would be something like the Nest thermostat, which I really like because it lets you set your thermostat (laughs) back, right, and save in that way. And if you have a cottage or something, you can control that remotely, which is great. It's down to fun ones. There's a microwavable popcorn bowl that you can get on Amazon. And it gets you out of buying those microwave uh, popcorn packages at the grocery store. I think it's something like uh, one fifteenth the cost to make popcorn that way and much healthier without all the fat. So, And typically, I like things that are green and healthy as well as things that save. So whenever I've come across somebody selling a product or service that fits, I put them in the ingredients section. And if you've got ideas or you've got a product, then uh, write to me, Gord at CashflowCookbook.com, and I'll happy to be considered uh, adding it in there. I do have one last question. Um, yeah. And that is – is a- it's, we're focused on sort of the baby boomer crowd or the 55 plus or the 4664, as, as I like to call them, or <laughs> the wiser and more mature of us. <laughs> another one I use. But you know what I, I think is particularly interesting, and I think that the boomers could really help it, is there is no really financial direction that like millennials have. It's not something I don't remember unless you remember. I don't <laughs> remember ever being taught in college, graduate school, high school, wherever it was, of how to deal with my finances. It's something (laughs) like all of a sudden I went out into the world and at the beginning I didn't have enough money, you know, and I still overspend and you go into debt and things like that. And then you become, you know, a more mature person. You take that job, you have your 401ks, that type of thing. It seems to me 
that this is the perfect Bible in a way uh, for millennials at this point um, to start getting a handle on how to think about their finances. Yeah, that's it. Well, I've seen a lot of interest in that and, and uh, a lot of interest from universities and colleges uh, having me come out to speak uh, for exactly that reason. There's one that wants me to speak to all of the graduating students. And I think, you know, I'm starting to see the snowball uh, go on that now as well. So um, it's a great gift if you've got millennials. If you're in my age back at 56, you probably got kids in their 20s. And there are a lot of them are starting out now. And, you know, they're going to be tempted to go buy a new car. And there's a multi-million dollar industry driving people to spend, spend, spend. And, hey, lots of things to enjoy, no problem. But let's do it in a really smart way. So I think setting uh, those kids off with the right kind of uh, information is super important. When you see the book, you'll see it says Canadian Edition on it. I wouldn't be off put by that. It's got some Canadian cultural references from your friends in the, here in the north. Right, but I all, see that. <laughs> yeah, all of the principles hold. There's nothing um, in there that would be different. I've looked at doing a U.S. one. I've got it about half done. But, you know, the content's exactly the same. It's all the same principles. I really appreciate this, Gordon. You know, I've done a, a bunch of interviews, and I think I have a few interviews uh, coming up uh, that deal with people's finances. This, I thought, was one of the more interesting. And I really recommend this. Where can you get the Cash Flow Cookbook? Is it Amazon, your site, that type of thing? Yeah. Um, you can go to uh, Amazon.com uh, and get it, or you can get it from my site, which is CashflowCookbook.com. And if you go to CashflowCookbook.com, recommend you subscribe. Then you get all my blog posts every week, which is all incremental ideas and information on top of what's in the book on Cashflow Cookbook. Well, I am subscribed. I want you to know that. And I did get Great. my email to confirm and all that. That's so I highly recommend everybody go to CashflowCookbook.com. Or better yet, just uh, buy, the, buy the book from Amazon or from CashflowCookbook.com. And Gordon, I, I'm going to, I know me, I'm going to build up about a thousand more questions now that we know each other and have yeah. you back on the show. All right. I'd love to come back. That's terrific. Thanks so much, David. All right. My pleasure. And okay. uh, I'll be back in a moment. Again, thanks for listening. I'm David Yak here, and hopefully I'll see you next week. Uh, love you guys, and peace. Take out the papers and the trash.